to consent to speak as if in morning business. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd just like to uh, rise and uh, pay a tribute to three fallen National Guard members from South Carolina who were killed in Afghanistan June 20th, 2012 in the Coast Province, uh, members of the 133rd MP Brigade who were serving on active duty. This will be 16 members of the South Carolina National Guard have died in combat in Iraq and Afghanistan since 2003. And if I may, this is uh, the 4th of July weekend coming up, uh, preceding one of our uh, biggest holidays in America, and people rightfully will take some time off, I hope, to enjoy their family and friends and get away from uh, work and have some family time. And it's the uh, March of Special Event in our nation's history, the, uh, the, the founding of our, our nation through a Declaration of Independence that was not just words, but resulted in men and women fighting to achieve our independence. And here we are a couple of hundred years later, and we're still fighting. And my belief is that the radical Islamists that would kill us all if they could, it's better to fight them over there so we don't have to fight them here. And Afghanistan was the place the Taliban took over after the Russians left and invited al-Qaeda into the country, bin Laden. Uh, as their honored guest, and he had sanctuary there and was able to plan the attacks of 9-11 from sanctuary provided to him in Afghanistan. And our goal is to never let Afghanistan become a sanctuary for al-Qaeda or other terrorist groups. Thus, we're in a long struggle. It's been 10 years. It's been hard, but <clears throat> we are making progress. The Afghan army is getting better and stronger. Their police are getting more proficient at their job. We're going to be winding the war down in 2014, but I think we can do it in a fashion to make sure that Afghanistan remains stable and our national security interests are protected. But to make all those things possible, the weekend we're going to enjoy in the holiday season and denying terror safe havens, some of us have to leave our families and go off and fight this war. Uh, Sergeant First Class Brian, Brad Thomas of Easley, South Carolina, was killed in this attack on June 20th. Uh, he was a graduate of Travelers Rest High School, attended Greenville Technical College, a member of the 133rd Military Police Company of the South Carolina Army National Guard. He's survived by his wife, Jana, and a son, Caden, brothers, sisters, and I know the family is devastated. Uh, you are in our prayers, and God bless you and give you the healing and understanding during this uh, tough time into Sergeant First Class Brad Thomas. You died in the service of your country and you will be missed. Lieutenant Ryan Davis Rawl from Lexington, South Carolina was killed in the same attack. He was the first lieutenant in the 133rd MP Company. Graduated from uh, Lexington High School, a graduate of the Citadel, and um, he has survived. Uh, by his uh, wife, uh, uh, Catherine, and their daughters, three, uh, excuse me, son, Caleb. And uh, I just want to acknowledge to Catherine, who interned in our office, that you're certainly in our prayers. You did a great job for us, and anything we can do for any of these families in South Carolina, we will. And um, we uh, very much pray for you and your family. Sergeant John J.D. David Medor, I hope that's right, uh, the way I pronounced it, graduated Lexington High School. He was a wrestling, member of the wrestling team and a wrestling coach. Uh, he was a member of the same MP company. He's survived by his wife, Christy, and three daughters, Olivia, Brianna, and Elena. To uh, Christy and her family, uh, you will be in our prayers. This will be a tough weekend in South Carolina. We're going to have three funerals uh, to General Livingston and the National Guard family. You're certainly in our prayers. This is a tough blow for an MP company to have three people killed in one attack. So to all the members of that company, uh, we will do our best to take care of your families while you're gone. And we've had a big argument about health care and about transportation, and that's great. Democracy in action 
what's the right decision for the court to have made in the, uh, in the health care uh, case. Is this a good transportation bill or not? And I really appreciate, in a bipartisan fashion, trying to find a solution. But I just wanted to, to take a few minutes before we go into the holiday weekend and remind us of one thing we do have in common. Our freedom depends on people willing to fight for it. And the one thing about this war, whether you agree with the war in Afghanistan or not, virtually every American, regardless of political persuasion, has shown an appreciation for the troops and their family. And I cannot thank members of Congress enough for never losing sight. No matter how you feel about this war, we all appreciate those who fight it. And we all suffer and mourn for those who lose their life in this cause. I believe it's a just cause. I believe these men who joined the military voluntarily and left their families to go to Afghanistan were doing so in the most noble tradition of the country, that you were trying to make your family safer, my family safer, and that you died in the service of your country, and that is a life well lived. You died far too soon. You left behind young children, but you will never be forgotten. May God grant you eternal rest and peace. May God bless and provide understanding and healing to the families left behind. And may, as Americans, we never forget that our freedom is dependent upon a few of us being willing to go to faraway places with strange sounding names and risk never coming back. I yield the floor. Mr. President. Senator, 